Let's start off, I'll just drag in this uh, character asset, and then I'm gonna add in a kinematic body. I'll name this player as a child. I'm gonna add in the collision shape here. We'll add in a capsule shape, rotate it to be 90 on the X axis, and then I'll just drag in the 3D asset onto the player here. I'll name it graphics, and we'll enable editable children. Go into animation player, go to walk, and loop the animation here. Come back to the collision shape. Let's scale this and move it how I need. And like that's that's good enough. And then just save that scene there. And let's add a script to the player. It's mostly going to be my 3D platformer code with a few changes. So just put in the movement speed, how fast we move, how fast we turn and some fall, how much gravity affects you, and our max fall speed. You're not going to be able to jump, but you can fall, is the way I'm setting it up. So, and get a reference to the animation player, and then record our vertical velocity and whether or not we're on the ground. Then we're going to go to the physics process here, and the direction we're turning and moving, so forward or backwards, left or right. Let's add in some input here. Move forwards, move backwards, and then turn left, turn right, W for forwards, S for backwards, A for left, D for right, close that, and then set up our input, basic checks, just if we're pressing move forward, add one to move direction, otherwise Pressing backwards and minus one, turn right and turn left, same thing for turn direction. And then just for our turning, we just take our rotation degrees, y axis, and add the turn direction times turn speed times the delta the time since last frame, basically. And then for movement, we're going to calculate a movement vector, which will be, we'll take our transforms basis. So the basis are three vectors that point forward, up, and to the right of whatever the current. Uh, spatial node is and we multiply that so we get our forward node which is Z multiply that times our movement speed times our movement direction either forward or backwards and then uh, set our the Y component to be whatever the Y velocity is and then we move and slide um, using the movement vector and then we pass in this up as the floor normal and then we're going to do some uh, vertical velocity check stuff here. So was grounded will be whatever grounded was last frame, and then grounded will be updated to using the is on floor check, and then we just subtract some gravity from our y velocity. And then if we are on the ground, we're going to just do subtract uh, set y velocity to some small negative values. So move and, uh, move and slide will update the is on floor check, and then we're also going to just do if our y velocity is less than our max fall speed, then just set it to our max fall speed, and then add in a quick animation for playing, or function for playing animation. So we just pass in the name of animation to play. If we're already playing it, don't do anything. Otherwise, play that animation. And then just for playing the animation, we're just gonna check. If we're not on the ground, and we were on the ground last frame, play jump, or in this case, it'll be a fall animation. And then if we are on the ground, then and we're not moving then play idle otherwise play the walk animation and then i'll just save that and then create a new scene here and we'll add in an area i'm going to call this a cam area and then add a script to it it's pretty basic we're just going to check um, whenever something enters this area we want to know and see what it is. So we're going to connect the body entered signal, which is something areas have to ourself to an enable camera method we'll define here. So the enable camera method has to take body as a parameter since that's something the signal passes. And if the name of the body is not player, return and don't do anything. Otherwise, we're going to check and see if we have a camera node as a child or a node named camera, make sure it's named camera, otherwise it won't work and just get a reference to that camera call make current on it to make it the current camera and if it has a method set target then set that to the player and I'll just save that and then finally I'm going to create a follow camera here so create a script for this and we'll add in some variables here so turn speed how fast to turn to face the player follow distance what distance to follow the player at 
and whether or not follows whether or not to follow the player and then the speed of course here to follow the player at. I have them all as export vars so I can change them in the inspector how I want. Then here we have the target which will start as null and then in our process method here we're going to just check if target is null don't do anything and let's also define our set target method so we can just pass in the target to set pretty basic and then we're going to get um, here for our process method we want to get a vector pointing to the to the target so just take the global position of the target and take our own global position subtract that from the target's position we get a vector pointing to it get the distance so that way we can check what distance we're at, which is just going to be the length of that vector. Then we want to get a horizontal movement vector. Um, and so we just take that and set it to zero on the Y. And then we're going to normalize the two target vector so we can use it for some other checks. And then so our follow code is pretty basic, just a simple implementation. There's no collision checks or anything. So you can go through walls with the camera. We're just going to calculate our acceleration. It's going to be the distance minus the follow distance. So if we're at whatever 5 in this case, then it would be 0 and we wouldn't move at all. If we were at 3, then it would be negative 2 and we'd move backwards. If we're at 7, then it would, we'd move forwards. So we just add to our position whatever the acceleration is multiplied by the movement vector here on the horizontal times our speed times delta. So we move faster the closer we get, basically. And or we can move faster the farther we are and we move slower the closer we get. So next we're going to get references to the basis uh, y and x, so just up and right relative to the camera. And then we're going to take the dot product of that with the two target vectors. So if you don't know what a dot product is, it's you pass two vectors and it tells you how much they point in the same direction. So if they're both the length of one, then if they're pointing the same direction, it'll return one. If they're pointing in opposite directions, negative one. And if they're perpendicular, it'll be zero. If one's pointing 45 degrees from the other, it'll be 0 0.5 and like that. So I'm going to use that to calculate the rotation to face the player. So if I take the dot product and multiply it times turn speed times the delta. So dot product, dot product here, if I take the one dot product of the vector pointing to the right, with the one pointing to the player. So if we're pointing right at the player, then that would mean the one to the right dot product with it would return zero since they're perpendicular. Um, if I'm pointing to the left of the player, then it would return a positive number because they'd be pointing somewhat in the same direction. So I'd want to turn right, which means I have to negate it. So I just negate that here to turn right. And then if I was pointing to the right of the player, I'd want to turn left. And that would return a negative number since it's closer to the opposite direction of the right vector. And then it's the same thing for the up and down vector, or the up vector, just for rotating up and down. So I'm going to just save that here. And then we're going to come in, create a new spatial scene here. We'll add in call it world. And then I'm going to add in a mesh instance. And I'll just put a cube on it and come here, mesh create a convex static body for that. And we're just going to add in the player, camera area, and camera. So that's our special camera. So I'm going to add in onto this a collision shape and put on a box shape. I didn't put this in directly inside the um, scene itself because now if I do it like this, then I can have custom shapes for each area. And then, so once I've done that, I'm just going to move this down here so it's easier to deal with. Move it down, hold control to snap like that. And then I'm just going to hold R and scale it out a bit. Move it along like that. Control V, duplicate it. I can also hold control to snap when I'm rotating. Move it down like this. Down there. here and like that that looks pretty good so that's our basic scene so I'm going to come into the camera area here and this collision shape I'm going to move it out like here just move it along there and then take this one I want a static camera on it so I'm just gonna 
add in a regular camera node. I'll set it to be current and I'll move it down here, move it up and rotate it like this. Preview that, that looks fine. And then I want to duplicate this camera area. I'm gonna move it down here. Let's see, right there, looks pretty good. And let's check the camera there. Maybe move it up a bit, move it in. That looks fine. Then I'm gonna duplicate it again. Move it down to there. It doesn't really matter for this one, I guess. Just make sure that the area covers the path. And if you want to scale the shape on this one, make sure, see how it changes all of them? I have to go in here and click Make Unique. So that way it only changes this one. So I'm going to delete the camera on this one here. Drag on our special camera we made. And it's still over there, so I'm just going to Move it right here, rotate it in a bit, preview that, and disable follow on it. And then finally, I'm going to create one final area here and just move this one around like this. So I set the rotation wrong somewhere. Let's see. Zero out that rotation. And then just right there. 180. Yeah, that's fine. And then let's see if that's everything. I think just save this scene. Oh, and check follow on this so this camera will follow the player so we can test all of them. F5, let's load this scene. And let's see, I turn, I walk. When I enter a new area, it switches to that camera. And then this camera follows the player. And then this one follows it moving as well, not just through rotation. So I move towards it, pushes it away. Takes back. Switches back to the switch scenes there. We're done.